Hello and welcome. Gosh, been a couple of weeks since I've been here, so thanks for joining. I uh, see a couple of folks getting online. Good to see you again. And I've got a fun broadcast tonight. I'm really looking forward to it. I usually am, you know. I think uh, kind of all week about what I'm going to paint, what might be worthwhile to uh, discuss and uh, share with you all. So uh, last couple of weeks I've been busy. Put up what, one video, I think, and skipped the, the one last week. Sorry about that. Um, but that's kind of going to be the way summer is for me. I've got some neat things I'm going to be doing this summer, but uh, that involves a little travel and less time to do this. Plus, it's still light outside. I want to paint uh, outdoors more often, too. Um, so tonight, what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint a, uh, a little scene here, a little mountain scene I took a photo of when I was camping a couple weeks ago. And uh, what I thought I would teach tonight is a little bit about um, painting with a limited palette. Basically, I'm going to choose three colors. I've got Cad Red. Um, what did I put out there? <laughs> Cadmium Yellow Light and um, Cobalt Blue plus White. And um, so, you know, who out there has problems mixing color, right? Uh, a lot of folks do. You're not alone. So if color kind of mystifies you, I'll show you a trick here using a limited palette on, um, you know, a way to just basically simplify things, take less uh, or have less variables in the equation so that you can, um, you know, maybe focus a little bit more on mixing the right color rather than worrying about a whole huge palette of colors from which to choose. So, let's see. Oh, Phil, you're in the stormy south. Dana, J, 39, or 3698S. Thanks, guys. Good to see you again. Welcome. Um, so, I think this will be a valuable uh, lesson. I think, um, you know, I taught a workshop a couple weeks ago, and it's always, um, color has kind of come naturally to me, thankfully. Um, it's just something I think about warm or cool, lighter, darker, warmer, cooler. And I don't really think about, you know, I'll say I need something in the green family, but then it's, you know, does it need to be warmer green, cooler green, lighter, darker, that kind of thing. And it's just clicked for me. Uh, I realize that for most people, it doesn't click that easy. And um, so hopefully tonight I'll give you you know, I'll just show you. I don't usually paint with just a limited palette, so I might get myself backed into a corner and, and be able to, you know, have a color I can't quite mix because I'm limited on the three I'm starting with. But, um, you know, I hope to show you that that's okay, too. You don't have to match color for color outdoors. In fact, we're um, trying to create art, so uh, the values are more important than the color, and color is all relative. So, let me jump into that. I'm going to paint an 8x10. Um, it's on that Jack Richardson eggshell primed panel. I'm using hog's hair and um, synthetic brushes and just my three colors. So let's get started. I'll switch cameras here and get going. I've been plein air painting, so I've taken a couple of trips. Went up to Fraser Valley in Colorado, Winter Park, taught a workshop. That was gorgeous up there. Had the mountains, had snow on them, and the, you know, the meadows and the, you know, where we were painting were green and had wildflowers. It was pretty spectacular. I think it uh, rivaled anything I've seen in Europe. Had a great class of students there. It was an intermediate workshop, so they're pretty accomplished already. And uh, we just had a great time. Then I went up to Lander, Wyoming. Well, went into Wyoming, went up to Lander and painted, turned around as well. But um, beautiful spot up there too. My uh, medium tonight's gonna be the solvent-free gel, just cause I have that right here. And I'll probably put a little more of that out. Got a mix of brushes. Like I said, hog's hair size. I'm painting an eight by ten, so this is a. These sizes are what I'm comfortable with. Um, it looks like they're my biggest one. There's about an eight, or is an eight, I should say. Um, okay, so the colors: uh, cobalt blue, cad red light, cad yellow light, but not cad lemon. I don't know, I could have picked that too. Doesn't really matter for me. 
I could have put a, uh, like a Zorn palette you might have heard of. That would be, uh, your yellow would be yellow ochre, and your blue would be a black, like an ivory black. Because black, when you lighten it down, tends to look blue. So the point is, you can, um, you know, you can mix a lot of different things uh, from a limited palette here. So you could, you know, these are the primaries, and uh, we'll start there. Let's see. So my my scene tonight, that's a pretty cool little scene. I was up at uh, near Rocky Mountain National Park and saw this, and. I think it has kind of everything I want in a scene, but I also want something pretty simple there. I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to try to make my image a little larger here. There we go. Um, so I'm just going to generalize. I'm going to teach really the concept here. And uh, I haven't done any drawing, although I've marked the middle points on each edge of my canvas. And I've got, uh, you know, a typical landscape, a lot of green in there. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a drawing. Now, I would usually go with, um, you know, like burnt sienna and ultramarine blue and just kind of come up with a, a warm brown. Well, look at that. Immediately, now keep in mind, I don't, I don't paint with this palette every day. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some missteps as we go here. But, you know, right from the start, those two colors there, I was able to get pretty close approximation to um, my normal mixture. So let me just kind of feel out here on the canvas where I want my major shapes. Um, I'm going to design here a little bit because I don't know if the... Uh, my photo reference really has everything that I want in it. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, you know, I want the road kind of down and lower. I'm going to warm this up just a hair. Yeah, so I was up camping. I did a little video of a plein air piece I did up there too. But I haven't edited it yet. Um, I love this time of year, you know, the creeks and stuff are running off quite a bit and um, gosh it's just so pretty up there it's cool enough you know it's actually it was pretty actually <laughs> darn chilly in the morning I should say and um, I camp in the back of my truck most of the time just because I don't in the Rocky Mountains we get hail and um, that's no fun getting caught in a hailstorm in a tent Okay, then I'm going to put in some aspen in here, too. Got a few of those on the sides. Just looking for general placement on my palette here. See, I do have another little tree. I think maybe I'm going to put this one in the back down a little bit. You know, these pine trees aren't... Um, these are kind of a... You know, they're not like a, a cone-shaped. Um, so they do look a little more round. Maybe I'll, I'm not sure how I'll treat that, but I want them to look like a pine tree. I like how this little road kind of leads down there. And I've got a, kind of a background mountain here. Bring that over. And then I've got some clouds. I got too many clouds in this reference photo, but uh, I'll probably build in, you know, some clouds. Let's see. <laughs> I don't really. I kind of look usually for uh, just something in the reference that I can can go off of for you know a cloud or whatever. But I'm not really seeing it here so much. There's just a lot of clouds in that photo reference. A little too much. But anyway, that'll give me my roadmap. Okay, feel free to ask questions. For, so a little poll for you guys, put in your answer. How many of you have tried a limited palette? And if you have, and it's been a very different set of colors, what were they? Oh, 
Okay. Hey, Lucy. How you doing? Congratulations on getting into the Plein Air Artists of Colorado show. National show in New Mexico. Way to go. Okay, so what am I teaching here? <laughs> Let me get rid of this color. I don't really need it. So, um, you know, obviously one thing I've got here are um, greens. So let me mix up a green. Well, I've got the, of the blue I picked, it's the one that has more yellow in it. So it's already to the green side. I've got a really light yellow. And so that's also a very, um, um, you know, basically bright chromatic. So I'm getting a very chromatic green, really easy to get that. In fact, it's probably more than I want, right? Um, it's a little bright. But you know what? I'll put a little bit of that in here because, you know, in this foreground, I see some of that. So I'm just going to uh, gonna pop some of that in here. What? Why not, right? Put a little yellow in there. You know me. I'm not too precious about this stuff. Um, I think I firmly believe that when I you know, overthink it, then I end up getting a little bit too, um, uh, what's the word? Well, kind of tight about it, but I, I would, I would just say basically when I overthink it, it doesn't get any better. So overthinking doesn't improve the output. Okay. So I've got a nice, what I did here is basically I've got this really bright green. So I want it darker. Well, my thought process here is I need a darker value. If I add more yellow to it, that's lighter. So my only darker one, my darkest is the blue next is the yellow. So I got to add a little blue to make it darker. Well, that makes it a cooler green and a darker green. So I warmed it up a little bit with some red to warm it up because it's a nice warm green out there. And I'm going to just start to plop some of that in on my trees. And I'm going to try to use a plenty of uh, medium to get this guy, um, you know, get the paint moving around here. This is a weird pine tree, actually, now that I'm looking at that reference photo. Looks more like a cottonwood or something to me. Yikes. All right. You know, I like this kind of scrubbing motion to get paint put on. Um, some people struggle with these panels that I'm using here, saying they're a little too slick or um, that kind of thing. And uh, I totally get it. But, um, you know, one thing you can do is just make sure you got enough paint when you're putting it on there. Don't try to scrub and work that paint too much. Um, making, making it too thin. That's part of, the, part of the problem you might be having if that's your experience. All right, so limited palette. Who said what here? Phil, you've used the Zorn palette, yep, for portrait painting. You know, I think the Zorn palette's really better for figurative and, and portraiture. Is what I've heard. Um, although, you know, Zorn did some really nice landscapes too, but you look at the the skin flesh tones that he was able to get. Um, pretty fantastic. And uh, yeah, so anybody else out there? Okay, Dana. Magenta, Cad Lemon, Cobalt Teal, Black, and White. That's an interesting combo. I gotta think about that. You know, when I'm reading those, it's kind of like I'm tasting food. I, <laughs> as I read those, um, I think I, I'm actually, I just realized, my, you know, my brain is kind of like building the flavors, like you're listening to a, a server at a restaurant tell you about their, their dish for the night. It's kind of funny. Okay, um... Yeah, I'm getting a little, I'm going to drop some red in here in the middle of this, these pine trees up here. Get, you know, we got usually a rusty red trunk in there, although I don't really see it here, but for illustration purposes. So there I've got, you know, kind of my dark green that I need for sure. I also am going to put some aspen on top of here. So I, I really want that to be a dark shape. Um, 
I'm going to probably have to, you know, make this more of a pine tree looking thing here, right? And I'll do that with some of the, uh, I'll paint in with, with the sky shape and stuff like that. I'll carve that out. Um, then, you know, I'm going to use a bunch of different principles in this painting. Uh, you know, like we do in any painting, right? Um, pop in, just laying in some texture right now. Looking for any areas that might need to have some of these darks I've already got mixed up. Oh, the panel, uh, Lucy, is a um, Jack Richeson. And it's one of these um, gesso primed. It's kind of got an eggshell finish on it. There's a link to them in my bio or in my uh, the description of the video here. You know, I, I paint a lot on the oil primed linen. And that works pretty nice too. Um, by Centurion, but it's slick and it it's you know it doesn't stain or anything like that. Um, so I like these because uh, they do absorb a little bit of the. Um, the paint into the surface, but they are, you know, slicker. All right, so I'm going back in space a little bit here, and um, I've got oh, I've got another tree. I forgot that tree, another dark tree. So I've only got three choices. You know, I'm grabbing it. You ask, well, what did you mix for that? Well, I've only got three things: a little red, a little yellow, a little blue. That's a bad joke for some teachers, but it is kind of true. Um, Pop this guy in here. All right, so green, green wasn't too bad, was it? Right, and now I, I've, with these three colors here, I can make any kind of green. I've got this light bright green all the way to a a dull dark, you know, kind of warm green and cool green there. Okay, um, as I step back, then I've got another mountain back there. I'm going to use these principles of linear perspective and atmospheric perspective, actually. And so my my greens are going to um, dull up a little bit as I go back to this next plane. Now, that's not enough. Add a little more white there, a little more blue, and see if I can get that background plane to really stand up and be on its own. Okay, so now I've got a very cool blue-green back there. That's, um, you know, pretty perfect for what I'm doing. And really what I need here is just a differentiation. There's a green on green on green, right? So I need to make um, I need to make enough of a differentiation. And uh, sometimes i got to push that because in nature, if you just close your eyes or squint your eyes down, that's all you're going to see is the green on the green on the green. And you're not going to be able to differentiate that. So when you have that situation, you got to do something to uh, set the planes apart. Okay, I just put a little yellow in here. You know, and sometimes you can just grab the yellow pure, or whatever the color is, and mix it on the, the panel too, that's fine. I don't want to have too much of that. Yellow back in there, but you can put a little red in there, what the heck. Okay, and I'm gonna come back and work on all of these shapes. as I make my way through the painting. Um, then I'm going to step back a little bit more and I've got um, really kind of a dark purple blue. And so the, the only purple I can make here is between these two, you know, this red and the green now, or the red and the blue. Notice I'm just using the same brush. 
I, most of the time, you know, I use a lot of different brushes. Um, since I have all of these three colors, every mix is going to have every bit of them, you know, every, all of the three colors in here anyway, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. You end up with a little bit better, you know, easier to get color harmonies too when you use the limited palette. That's a good, that's a good thing. Just trying to find a pleasing blue violet here. I'm going to maybe go a little lighter. We'll see. Um, yeah, that can work all right. Actually, I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. So I just paused there and was kind of squinting at the painting to see if the edge of this blue and the dark of the tree became one. I didn't want them to become one shape. So that's a good little test when you put those colors down to just see if, you know, if you want them to blend, that can be a, a you know, kind of a strategic artistic move to join shapes in value, but have a different color. That's kind of sophisticated painting, right? But in this case, I really want, you know, these to be separate shapes here. So I'll block that in. You know, it's already reading and I've just, these are really simple shapes, right? I'm always, I'm still kind of amazed by that sometimes at how little I need to really paint in there to get a scene going. Okay. You know, I also see a little bit of, um, you know, there's a little puddle somewhere in here too. It's lighter than that, but I'm going to pop a little paint in there. What the heck? Just as a marker. Um, some of the sky, actually, that's, yeah, that's not the right blue anyway. It's the sky that's reflecting in there. I got ahead of myself. Sometimes you got to use a little logic. You got to put the intuition aside and use the logic on what's actually reflecting in there, you know, and it's on my palette here. That blue looks so light, doesn't it? And it's, it's not, you know, in the middle of my value scale, it's on the lighter side for sure. But when I put it on that white panel, it sure gets, um, you know, it looks very dark. You know, so on this panel, uh, you know, Lucy, if you thing I like about these is I put that paint on there, I can scrape it off with my palette knife. It doesn't even come off. I mean, I could go in and dig at it and get rid of it, but I can stain that surface really easy. And then when I paint over it, I'm not picking anything up. Okay, so, so far, still just three colors, right? Now, I chose this kind of warm red to outline things, and that's a nice compliment to green. So, um, yeah, I'll tell you that. I guess, you know, it was something I didn't think about when I did it. Um, just because, you know, I think it's become part of my muscle memory on painting, right? But, um, you know, I just realized that as I'm building this, I've got the greens in there and that, that red outline is a nice compliment. Okay, now I'm going to mix my sky. I did switch brushes for this just because I want a nice clean blue sky. But my blue is my blue. I don't, you know, I can't, can't really do too much with it. I do have a nice green, you know, it's the cobalt blue, so it's a more on the green side than the red side. And uh, we'll pop some of this in here. Hello, Pennsylvania. Nature sketches. Thanks for joining. Good to see you tonight. All right. Um, sorry if I bumped my microphone here. I'm right at that level. I'm going to try to keep my sky pretty clean here so one trick to that is you know paint in the big areas um, but just go right up to the edges 
avoid dipping in or catching that other paint of other color families like the green here until you really need to. But if you put enough paint on there, on the palette, or I'm sorry, on your uh, panel, it'll be easy to just move some of that into those um, and help draw out some of those shapes when you're ready. Now I'm getting a little darker up here. Well, I got some of that green. I couldn't resist. Had to get right up there into the green, didn't I? We're going to make this a nice sunny day as it was. I was up there hiking, um, trying to learn about mushroom foraging. Something about that is kind of fascinating to me. I don't know why. But it is. So anyway, I was up walking around in the morning trying to just see if I found anything. found a couple. And I'm still alive, so I must be doing something right. You know, for me, there's something really um, rewarding, I think, if you know how to forage and eat off the land. I don't have this kind of survivalist thing to me. I'm just curious about nature and everything, right? It always amazes me when you think your only food supply is coming from the supermarket. How limiting of a thought that can be. It's kind of fun. It makes a walk in the woods a whole different experience when you're trying to search for these little gems of of um, <laughs> mushrooms. All right, let's see here. Oh yeah, Lucy, I do tone my panels. Um, you know, if if you were to go back and look at my other videos here, I would guess probably about every every other time I. I tone my panel, or I'm using one that's pre-toned. These Jack Richesons come um, pre-toned as well in a warm gray and a cool gray, which is kind of nice. Uh, I just chose white tonight. You know, I think it just goes to show that it's really not that critical. Um, you just start where you start. And if it's toned, then, you know, you're making your decisions based on a toned canvas. Okay, I added a little yellow, or a little red, sorry, to that uh, upper zenith of the sky. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. <laughs> you cracked me up. Uh, see, I, you know what? You're the one coming up with the dad jokes now. Sounds like something I would tell my kids as I'm trying to get them excited to look for mushrooms and... Okay. Um, yeah, it's pretty chromatic. Especially in the video. It's not that chromatic in person. Looking at it on my, on my iPad, I can see what you're seeing. Um, but that's okay. So, um, <laughs> I will go ahead and um, I'm going to switch brushes again. I'm going to make a little bit of a cloud color here. And, you know, I like to have a, a nice gray neutral for the underside of the clouds. But, um, you know, what do I do here? So, I've got my, my blue sky. And the gray of the clouds is going to be just a little bit, just a hair darker than that sky color. Wow, I grabbed way too much white. But I, it's not blue. It's not red. <laughs> it's a, you know, it's kind of a, a gray. Sometimes it's a cool gray. More than, more than, more often than not, it's a cooler gray. So I'm going to just build that here with this blue and red, but you'll see I'm getting kind of a purple. And um, the opposite, since I've mixed those two, and this is the three primaries on our color wheel, since I have a, a combination of these two, I can gray that down and neutralize it by using the color on the opposite side of the color wheel, which is my yellow. I could have laid them out that way, but it really would kind of 
mess up my um, mixing surface area. So I chose not to do that. But I added a little bit of that yellow into here and it took away the purple, but it's not, you know, it's, it's not quite, I can see the yellow in the mixture, but I wouldn't say it's yellow. I can see the violet in the mixture, but I wouldn't say it's violet. So that's right where I want to be if I want to, you know, a gray. Okay, so I'm going to put in, I'm making this cloud up. I'm going to go quiet as I think here. Um, yeah, so the undersides of the clouds a lot of times are, are the gray part. There's areas of the clouds, though, that just don't get the, you know, they're blocking the sun or whatever. And then there's areas of the clouds that are, you know, just a little cooler. I'm going to just take that pile, add a little bit of blue into it and cool off, you know, maybe some of, um, what do I want to cool off there? Let's see if I can, that's a little darker and a little cooler, kind of in the middle here, huh? So now I'm starting to modulate the color just enough to say something, um, but still not really getting into the details just yet. And likewise, I could, you know, I could go a little yellow and a little red and warm up a little bit of this. I need to lighten it up a little bit. So all from this pile that I have here, just gently messing with the the color temperature. That's kind of cool. And I don't know why I'm messing around so much on this. I'm going to probably get heavy handed and mess up some of these colors and such that I've put in here, but that's okay. Um, that looks pretty nice. So the trick with the underside of the, the, the cloud shape um, in shadow is that it's a little bit darker than the sky. And uh, it's quite a bit darker than the light side of the cloud. But uh, I'm sorry. So it's let me let me just be a little more specific about that. It's a little darker than the sky just below it. The sky is getting darker and more blue as you go from the horizon to the zenith. So it's darker than the sky just below it. But a lot of times, and you know, guys, I go out and I walk at night and I study this stuff. I just sit there and I tell myself, okay, is that lighter, cooler, warmer, darker? What is it? And uh, so in general, what I see around here is that, um, you know, it's darker than the sky below it, but it's about the same value or just, you know, not much darker than the zenith or the sky above the clouds. Okay. Hopefully that was sufficiently confusing. Uh, let's see, am I mixing in a lot of the solvent gel with your paint? You know, not so much. Not really. Just enough. You know, I'll start with the, the paint by itself and then I'll just add a little bit of that to get the flow and coverage I'm looking for. So now I'm going to put in the white of the clouds there. That's about my brightest bright. And you know, like I grab the, the paint here and um, it's kind of thick. So I go in with just, you know, a little bit on my brush and I'll start to mix that in. I am using the medium rather than mineral spirits as a solvent because the mineral spirits will break down the, uh, the linseed oil, which is the binder in the paint. So if you break that down, you just end up with the dust and dirt that makes up, you know, the paint. So you don't want to do that. Okay, so for my clouds, um, I'm going to warm the mixture up a little bit here. I'm just trying to get the teensiest amount of, of red and yellow into there, though. Thanks, Lucy. Glad you're enjoying it. 
Glad you dialed in. How fun. We need to go paint sometime. Um, yeah, I keep looking for photo reference on this cloud and I ain't got none. So with this cloud, I'm going to pick up the blue. See how I'm mixing that in? That gives me a nice soft edge at the top. And I'm going to, I'm going to mess with this anyway, but you know, as I go, this, my skies, I, I'm a back and forth, back and forth guy when I paint my skies for sure. Um, but, um, you know, I'll save my warmest, purest white for some of these highlights up here, you know, somewhere in there. You know, there's all these cool little edges to the, the clouds and such, so. This is more about just showing you how realistic of a scene and color combination you can get with, um, you know, with your uh, limited palette here. Um, let me use, I'm gonna use a little palette knife, what the heck. So I wanna integrate um, kind of the, the shadow side of the cloud with the lit side there. Um, I can also really soften this edge, for example, like that. Now you're saying, wait, you just painted all that. Why are you messing it up? You know, I just kind of like making my life miserable. No, I'm just kidding. I like the challenge of, you know, the randomness you can find in some of these um, things. So let's just go ahead and integrate the pine tree edge into here right now. We're integrating, I'm just saying basically I'm, I'm bringing the two edges together. Happy clouds, yeah. We'll see. <laughs> um, you know, I can I can lay some white on top of that. I can go back in with my my dark and really kind of pop some of that in. Do a little with the blue in there, maybe. You know, and I can scrape most of that back if I don't like it too. So, do, you know, don't be afraid of that, you know, doing this kind of stuff. Look at that nice soft edge up there when I drag my paint off in that, that kind of motion. That's really, you know, that's really cloud-like. I like that a lot. So there, I've just knocked back a bunch of edges there. Softened everything up. Pull some of this blue into there, mix the sky. I mean, you know, you can do anything you want. I can bring some of that blue sky up into there. Get rid of some I don't like. Just have fun with it. I mean, there's no, it's only paint. It's only a panel. You might find something that becomes your signature technique. You never know. And especially with clouds, they're just so unique that um, this, you know, these random kind of marks are just really fun. Okay, um, so, you know, I kind of like that soft edge around here. I'll scrape some of that paint off so I can, right on that edge, so I can easily, um, you know, paint the tree and the, the clouds back in. Now look at this mountain right here. See, it's kind of a soft edge, but watch if I just do this. A couple of times. You know, I can come back in and make it a harder edge. I've dirtied up the blue a little bit in my... Now see, that was a big goop of mistake there, but it's all right. It's kind of like deconstructing it a little bit. I've got stuff in place. I may, I'm, you know, cutting it back a little bit, deconstructing, um, you know, and I might add, end up with some really neat, um, you know, randomization in here. Okay. 
Am I scaring you yet? <laughs> Look at all that. So see with my, my palette knife, I'm just, just going to town. Now, see, I can't put it down. Stop me. But it's, so, it's really fun. It's really a lot of fun. I mean, you can take it too far. I've taken it too far, definitely, and thought, oh, okay, I need to scrape it all down and start over. But see, with all of that, and you know, how often have we painted and we wouldn't dare, wouldn't dare go back in and just do this. So, I, you know, I love painting for you guys because honestly, it's a little bit freeing for me. I'm not too attached with how it comes out, oddly enough. You'd think I'd be more attached. At least that's what I thought when I started this stuff. But it's kind of freeing because, you know, so many of you have sent me comments that... Uh, that was one of the most important things you've taken away from my videos is just the willingness to experiment. So, awesome. Do that. So I think that's freed me up to, to just say, all right, how crazy can I be? Let's put that road in. All right, how do I get that brown? What's brown? Well, I got a pretty good brown with this red and blue, right? It's a light value, so I'm going to start by trying to find my value a little bit. And, um, yeah, it's a little lighter than the, the grass there if I squint down. That's a little too purple. I'm going to add a little yellow to it. That's kind of yellow. Maybe I'll try to add a little red to it. See, I'm finding the color. I mean, I only have three choices here. If I need to lighten it, I've got to go with the yellow or the white. If I go with the white... I'm cooling it down. If I go with the yellow, I'm warming it up. Um, so if I don't like, if I need it to go darker, I need it to get cooler, I can go into the blue. If I need it, you know, more intense or, or warm it up, I'm going to go into the red. So hopefully that, that helps anybody, you know, on tonight or that will watch this in the future. Um... A little bit with their color mixing. Um, so I've got a few different colors here. And uh, as I look at this road, so, you know, just... If you're looking at stuff like this to paint, try to, you know, you can get kind of a basic color going for sure. But look for, uh, you know, look where it changes temperature. And, uh, you know, try to capture some of those things. And you'll end up with a little more realistic looking, you know, result. It's kind of fun. So I'm just taking that pile and I'm, I'm you know, adding a little red and a little blue to it. Darkening it. Um, you know, there's some dark colors here in the foreground. Not really trying to, um, uh, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, it's hell getting old. Oh, yeah, I'm not trying to really draw too much here, but I am. Um, if I can get some of these colors in correctly right now, then I, I won't have to do it anymore. And I'll just be like, oh, that's characteristic of that area. Dana, you can be more daring. So can you. Let's see who else said you can too. Oh, Lucy. Yeah. Yeah. We just got to free ourselves from thinking every painting has to be a home run. It's kind of crippling. Okay. Um, I'm just going to actually cover up that little spot of blue there. And then now as I go back, it got really pretty... Pretty light back there, didn't it? And a little more yellow to it. So let's see what this looks like here. I really want that to be um, light at the top of here. 
Kind of just shows that that road's highlighted and at the, the peak of its whatever. Prince. That kind of thing. And darken it back up. Same mixture. And I've got plenty of paint, you know. Don't I don't know if you noticed my white when I started here, but I pretty much had a 37 milliliter, milliliter tube of uh, white squirted out there. Of course, I use the big tubes, but you know, some people look at how much paint I squirt out and they're probably thinking, wow, what's this guy uh, made of money or what? But you know, I mean, geez, we, we buy a lot of paint. You're not going to run out of paint. I know it's expensive to get started, but geez, after a few years, I had so many things of paint. <laughs> I have so many tubes of paint. I have hundreds of tubes of paint. I've got them stuffed in nooks and crannies in the doors of my truck, in the closets, in you name it. Anybody else like that? Plus then sometimes I'll win paint, which I'm really excited to do at like an event. It's fun to win it, but, um, you know, then some of it just sits for a long time because I, you know, I <laughs> bought so much of my own. Who else has a lot of paint? All right, well, there's my, uh, there's my road a little bit here. I think I need a a pretty strong dark on some of the edges. Um, actually, I think I need yeah something going on there. And see now I'm now I'm starting to get into my drawing a little bit more. And just shoring this up. And it's kind of fun, too, when you have just a, a loaded brush with two or three colors on it, you know, and just putting down a mark that's not fully mixed. Adds a nice dimension to, to our paintings. And something that, you know, people at a show will come up and say, wow, look at that brush stroke right there. I love, I love that about the painting. So, I've got some variegated, striated, whatever you want to spend another minute on this road and finish it up. That kind of yellow top up there. Maybe even a little more white right at there. And I have just a little bit of that kind of lighter value maybe over here too. Okay, I like that. I'm happy with that. Um, let's quickly just put in that little bit of sky blue, that real light kind of color that's in this puddle up front. So I just grabbed a little bit on my knife of these two real quick. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to wipe off the bit that I don't want. Maybe even a little bit more on here. I'm just trying to say, well, how big a puddle do I want? So I've wiped that back. And let's see if I can totally get this, pull it off or mess it up. Yeah, about in the middle, I guess. There we go. So it took a, a couple of strokes there to get that right. And then I'll clean up that edge a little bit. Maybe put a little dollop of it. Right here. Yeah, 
and I might need to add some chroma to that, but um, sometimes those little reflections and little bits of water that you find on the edge of things, they're a real nice way to, um, you know, add, bring the, you know, the sky back down into, um, into the landscape there. Add a little blue among all the green and stuff. Okay, well, so I've got a pretty good uh, start here and everything's blocked in. And you can tell what it is. I mean, as rough as it is, really, it's not uh, by any means a finished painting yet. So um, I may just make these more cottonwood than pine at this point. And I'm also thinking about, um, so that, that uh, linear perspective, um, since I'm looking up at the tree here, the, the shape of it, the round would be um, arcing up like this. As I'm looking more toward the middle of the tree and its eye level, my contour lines flatten out because this is about my eye level here, right? And then as I'm looking down, the contour lines start to angle down. Does that make sense? So at eye level, everything's flat. The more I look up into a shape that's round, the more I'm going to see the roundness of that shape. So that's linear perspective that's causing that. Okay, and so I can just take those lines right out. But if I paint in that direction, um, you know, if I keep that in mind when I'm painting, I'm adding volume to this. So let's keep on that track for a minute. Um, I started with, so a couple of things are going on here. I like, I like this kind of reddish outline um, to the tree. So I'm actually going to put a little bit more of that in here in a couple areas. I'm just experimenting. Let's try this. I'll even do it up here maybe a little bit. Although as I'm looking up, I'm getting sky shine. Um, so that's where the leaves are reflecting more of the blue cool of the sky. Um, on the bottoms here, um, this is where you would get maybe some more warmth is down toward the bottom of the tree where the, the sun is reflecting off the ground and bouncing up in there. So see, just even doing that, as rough as it is, it adds volume to the tree. That's kind of fun. Isn't this fun? God, I love doing this. Okay. So, um, I've added the red there. It's a little darker. And now I want to put some lighter spots on this tree, but I don't want to get too light. So what am I going to mix to get that? Well, a little red, a little yellow, a little blue. Boy, I kind of really have a grayed down green there, don't I? It's all right. Um, is that lighter? Yeah, it's a little bit lighter. I might go more, a little more yellow in that. And just a touch more white. And... Um, so let's see here if I can pitch some of these branches in the middle um, to make a little more volume on the tree. Now I'm, I'm not going to the edge. I'm going to leave that, you know, I'm going to leave the, um, the very edge a little bit darker and cooler. I'm just kind of building up some of these lights in the middle. And as I go up toward the top, that's going to be a little cooler and bluer. Sorry, I just grabbed, uh, went, went to my normal spot where my blue is, but no worries, I didn't cheat. Okay. So I don't even know what kind of tree this is now. <laughs> but I like that it, 
it's shaped like a ball or a whatever. Okay, so these these topmost branches again, these are these are kind of um you know, they're light and blue because they're really picking up part of the sky up there. Now I'm I'm branching out and going into the sky because I want that tree not to look like a pasted shape on top. But as we come around and this tree turns under, then the um, you know the tree is darker. You know, so I, I'm gonna keep this. Oh well, see I've got a really powerful stroke of blue uh, paint that I just got in there, and that's okay. You know that that little. These little things like this. Let's do this. So I, I've dipped into all three colors, barely mixed them, and I'll see if I can get away with just putting in some of that pure color and not not really mixing it up. I think that's fun. You guys know Scott Burdick's work? He's a North Carolina artist, married to Susan Lyon. They're both really great artists. But anyway, he, I love his recent work that he's been doing. Really, um, really strong, strong, strong stuff. And he's, you know, very bold with the line and that kind of thing. Well, what do you what are you guys thinking? How's this looking so far from your perspective? Whoa, I got a whole different color on there. That's all right. Yeah, I'm kind of having fun with this. Pop some straight old blue in there. How fun. There we go. I think that looks awesome. <laughs> it's got thick paint. It's got all these little different bits of color in it. You could tell it's a tree. I think you could tell it's a tree at least. I don't know. You tell me. Um, maybe pop a little bit of a indication there of, um, of a trunk. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, that's really, really fun to look at, actually. So, you know, um, thanks, Kay. Glad you like it. And, um, oh, yeah, and Lucy, thank you. You know, I guess so. Here's a little side lesson, I think, that always kind of amazes me. When you don't, when you're not a slave to your photo reference and you just try to make f art and have fun, um, you know, you end up with some really pleasing stuff. And I'm all about having a painting that I like to look at. I'm drawn to paintings that are different textures and the, the, you know, the brush strokes you can see and they catch the light differently as you move around. Um, I really like that kind of thing. So that's what I like to do in my art. And then, you know, this swath of light right here, I put that in really quickly. It seems a little light, but you know, I like the brush stroke. I like the, the warmth of it. I'm going to leave it. Why not? All right, try to build out this guy a little bit here too. Um, so this other tree is a little bit over the hill, not in an age wise, but I think um, maybe just try a little palette knife on that guy too. There we go. I'm going to leave it. That's all fun. What the heck? I 
kind of like that color right there. Why didn't I get that right the first time? There we go. But it's a little discongruent. Is that a word? It's not congruent up here, so I'll take some of that out. And I can rough up the edge of this road a little bit. Like that. And, you know, see how it's making a really kind of a cool mark as I do that. So I'm kind of defining the lay of the land a little bit with my knife very easily. And look at all that implied texture there. It's just really thin paint here. Other paint I didn't quite scrape down. Um, gosh, you know, I think we just overthink it too much sometimes. Work too hard for an effect. Let's see if I can get away with a little yellow in here. Ooh, that's bright. Why not though, right? That's kind of fun. I'll leave it. It works for me. A little hint of that white right there. I do like that, that little spot of, uh, of water there. I gotta, it's not quite convincing for me yet. But see, this is an example where I'm gonna overthink it, overwork it, and not end up getting what I want, I think. It's a risk. Yeah, Dana, that's, I overthink and overwork. That's why I took up plein air painting, really. When I started to uh, paint on location then, um, you know, that, that just made all the difference for me because the light was changing and you can't overthink things. You just got to get going. Okay, I don't want to do too much more to that road or it's going to start to look, uh, oh, I don't know. Is too much. Bring a few little lines up into the landscape there. I don't think I'm even going to put any aspen in this now. I've, now I've got this country back road scene, not anything in the high country. <laughs> uh, but I want to make a picture that I enjoy. I'm going to darken this a little bit. That background edge. I want to darken it so that that road still really, you know, pops. And how does that road, that road's kind of bowed down, isn't it? Okay, yeah, I don't know if I love those marks. But I can make them more fun with a palette knife. All right, has this at least inspired somebody to use their palette knife more? I got this background hill up here that's a little less chromatic yellow. Put some of that right into the tree. It's okay. Okay, that's kind of good. All 
I said I wouldn't touch that road anymore, didn't I? Dang it. Just can't help myself. Okay, and then this back background hill over here. Um, you know, I think... What do I have here? I've got this kind of blue. I know this is my sky color over here, right? We were using that earlier. So I'm going to just lighten this shape up a little bit here. Okay, any little blue that I got or green that I got in my sky, I can clean up a bit. But see, by dragging that sky blue down into my mountain shape there, it um, really added that atmosphere to it and set it back. Great little trick. Um, no, not a trick. It's just knowing the properties of light and atmosphere and what happens, so. Um, and then I think what I'll do is just maybe go pretty light here on the sky. And, um, you just lighten that horizon even a little bit more. And now I don't mind putting some brush strokes back into that sky. Oh, let's put a couple sky holes in there. I really love this shape, so I don't want to do too much of this. But, um, you know, I could, um, for example, do something like that. It's a little bright. Tone that down a little bit. You know, and then that could have a little something in there and then of course I'll smooth that edge down with my palette knife a little bit but that somehow makes makes a pretty big difference and even just kind of this see how my brush is all roughed up there Um, if I leave it like that and then I just barely, you know, come in and touch some of that tree, then, oh, you know, there's only a few um, bristles that actually catch that and deposit paint. So that's kind of a nice effect as well. Nice. All right, so that looks pretty, um, you know, it looks natural, I think. Bring a little bit of that out here. I don't know what I'm doing now, just kind of trying to randomize some textures in in this tree in the foreground. It doesn't seem like it's quite dark enough. Pop that up just a hair. There we go. And maybe the same thing over there. And then I kind of like that bright green that I had made to begin with. So let me make up a little more pile of that. Definitely liked it. Very chromatic. And I'll pop some of that into the foreground here as well. So what, you know, what this does for me here is you got a really chromatic yellow right here, for example, right? That tells me this plane is before 
and closer to me than this one back here, which theoretically could be the same stuff, but see how that's a much more muted yellow, much more neutralized, grayed down with white. So that chroma difference helps me build the illusion of space. Look at all that with three colors. What a fun little painting. So let me finish the clouds here and we'll, let's see, do I need, what do I need here? I got it. That's kind of a big palette knife, but who cares? Um, so, you know, like I built the tree, I want some of the, um, you know, I want the, the highlights. I want to the, bring the cloud a little bit three-dimensionally toward me by, by putting in um, some of the highlights, not at the edge of the cloud, but toward the center, toward me. And then that builds a little bit of interest. It says this is a three-dimensional form. I have a little green in here, so I gotta scrape that out. I'll soften that side down a lot. That's a really cool effect. And then you know what, I'll just pop, pop a little thick paint right here. You know, and the other thing I kind of like to do is come back into my clouds with a little more of the sky color. And I softened a lot of edges, right? So maybe um, I could get away with a few harder edges. Um, the question is where? And I like to go a little darker maybe than that. Add some fun to the, the clouds there. Okay. Um, you know, barring anything I'm just overlooking, I think that's going to be my, my painting for tonight. Um, let's see, did I miss anything here? Well, I would say, you know, if I just kind of critique a little bit before we wrap up is, um, you know, I'm looking for any tangents where edges are meeting in a way that's not pleasing. Um, you know, I've got a nice vertical here. I've used an eight by 10. So one little trick for you guys is, um, if you're gonna paint something in a portrait orientation like this, um, an eight by 10 is probably better to do that than like a nine by 12. So an eight by 10, I don't know if this is, this might be confusing, but follow along. You, you discuss panel sizes in ratios. So the, um, an eight by 10 is a three, four ratio, or I'm sorry, a four, five ratio. So you have two, four, six, eight. If you take a multiple of two, it goes into it four times on the one side, and then one more time to get you to 10. So two, four, six, eight, four, fifths. It's a four to five ratio. A nine by 12 is a three, six, nine, 12. So it's a three to four ratio, <laughs> three to four ratio, three, six, nine, 12. So what that means is that a three, four ratio has a longer long edge in relationship to the shorter edge. Meaning it's better, I find, to use a 9 by 12 for example, or any 3 by 4 um, panel uh, in a landscape. So using it in a landscape orientation rather than a portrait orientation. Of course you can break that rule, but that's something to consider. If you're always painting 9 by 12s and you ever put them in a portrait orientation and you find that you're just ending up with like too much foreground or too much sky, it might be that that long edge of a 12, a nine by 12, is just too long. Try an eight by 10, a four to five ratio uh, panel. Okay, let me see, I got some comments here. I like how you have one central tree on the left, thanks. You know, it just kind of keeps it simple and that's um, a nice strong shape. And you find it interesting that with just that one size palette knife, you make all the different marks. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, you can scrape with it. 
Um, you know, I've got a couple palette knives here. This is what I was using most tonight. I also have this teardrop one, but it's a little long for an 8x10. Um, but yeah, you can scrape this way on the panel. You can push paint this way, which is more of a squeegee action. You can scrape with it. You know, you can do all these, you know, you get a very lyrical stroke with it, too. I mean, you can cut lines. Um, it's a very, very flexible tool. And the surface quality is incredible. When you put enough paint on the palette, or on the painting um, surface, you can really get these wonderful textural qualities that just and make the painting stand out from across the room, for example. If this were in a gallery and it's lit from above, it's going to look a little bit different as you walk by it and the light hits different um, parts or the, the little peaks in, in paint there. And um, that's just a really fun experience. It's something you don't get with print or reproduction artwork at all. And I think one of the great things that makes original oil painting um, such a wonderful thing to look at and um, unique and uh, worth collecting. Okay, so I will um, switch on my camera real quick and we'll wrap up. Okay, well, no paint on the face. <laughs> I don't know how I imagined it, or uh, I could have sworn that tonight it would have had paint on my face. For some reason, I thought I was uh, wiping my, my face here. Um, I hope you enjoyed tonight's uh, episode or lesson, I guess. So really the key thing is a limited palette. If you're having trouble with colors, just pare it down. Get a, a red, yellow, and a blue. Um, some work better than others, so I wouldn't go too crazy until you, you know, you get used to it. Uh, Dana had done, if you look back in the comments there, uh, I forget what the mixture was, but um, a limited palette that was kind of wild. So, you know, you will get some neat effects, but it might be a little more difficult for you too. Um, but you can do... Um, the, the three primaries, or you could shift it on the color wheel and do the three secondaries. So, um, orange, purple, and <laughs> orange, purple, and whatever. Um, and uh, basically, then you limit, you know, you limit what you have to choose from. So, when you're trying to make a color, you just say, um, am I, Do I need it darker? Do I need it warmer? Do I need it cooler? And you only have three choices plus white. And um, orange was the other, <laughs> the other secondary color. Uh, it's been a long day. Um, so yeah, give that a try. Also give, um, you know, the palette knife a try too. It's really fun. And as you'll see, I guess, you know, the other side lesson here was that use your reference to just kind of get you painted and painting and interested in doing something. But um, see, for me, when I'm doing these broadcasts, my reference is only about this big to me because I'm just looking at it in a window on my iPad. So it's very small. And, you know, that just gives me a lot of freedom to do what I want with it because I can't see all the details. Um, so maybe that's another tip as well. Anyway, try the limited palette. See how you like it. If you're ever just getting frustrated or you're finding you keep going back to the same old mixtures, just limit yourself and do a few paintings with it. There's really kind of unlimited potential in the limited palette. So with that, I'll leave you for this week and uh, wish you a happy painting. I appreciate all your comments, and I loved hanging out with y'all tonight. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.